Okay, uh, let me do a inter quick introduction. I'm Mike Kimbrough. I'm the Managing Director of Solver uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, today, I'm going to be demonstrating the business, uh, the BI360 Self-Service Business Intelligence Suite. So I'm going to walk through um, just a couple of PowerPoints just so that everybody understands uh, who um, Solver is, a little bit of our history, and just also for the, for the agenda today, just to point out that I am going to be demonstrating um, formatted reporting both via Excel as well as um, via the web. That's live reporting for SAP V1. And then I'm also going to demonstrate uh, via Excel and the web our enterprise reporting, which, which is really um, based off of our data warehouse. So you get kind of two flavors, and I'll explain all of that. Uh, then I'm going to show you a little bit of dashboards and round, it, uh, round up the hour with a few minutes of web-based budgeting just so you can uh, get a little flavor of everything that we do. So a little bit about Solver. We've been in business for about 20 years. Uh, we've always focused on, on business intelligence solutions, whether that's budgeting, reporting, data warehouse, um, you know, really the, the, the dashboards, the, really the full suite. Uh, over our product history, we've created uh, three separate products. The first product that we built was a product called Enterprise Reporting, very large-scale, um, heavy, uh, very powerful re uh, enterprise reporting product. Uh, that product was acquired by Microsoft. It had a very long um, history. Uh, it ran for about 13, uh, 13 years. Uh, the second product that we built was our first attempt at an Excel add-in. That product was called Excel Reporter. Uh, that product was acquired by SAP. Um, as many of you know, uh, you're probably aware of Excel Reporter. It was acquired by SAP and then just recently sunset with the version uh, 9.0. The product that you're going to see today, it, BI360, um, is by far the most successful product that we've had over our lifetime. So uh, whether that's customer ads or whether that's sales or whether that's really you know, the breadth of our product offering, it's really a much different product. It's very powerful, and it's been very, very successful. So not too much on the accolades, but just so you know um, that we're doing some of the right things. One of those major accolades is that we're um, part of the, Mat the Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, two years running, and we're expecting that to be for the third year um, coming up here very soon. In the four and a half years that we have introduced BI360, uh, we have now over 1,400 customers in over 40 countries um, and we have global presence and offices uh, throughout the globe. So again, just a little bit uh, accolades that, again, we can make this entire um, presentation available to you, and we, and we can send this out to you at the end of today's um, session. <clears throat> the purpose of me showing you this uh, PowerPoint slide really is uh, a couple of reasons. One is I want you to see kind of a snapshot of some of the customers and some of the industries that we work in. Very, important, uh, very important to point out that we don't work in one in industry any better than we work in the other. It's really about two things. Uh, you, can you design it and, and create it in Excel? And do you have access to the data uh, across your organization? And I'm going to show you that, that we can do both of those things today. So it wouldn't matter if you're in healthcare or you're in media and entertainment, a sports team, or whatever it might be that your business is in, we can address your requirements the same across any industry. So this will be the last PowerPoint that I showed today, but it's also the most powerful one. Um, I will point out that it is not indicative of our, our entire product offering. Uh, this, this is really kind of the foundation or the heart and soul of what we do. And it's going to be important for you today because it will help you understand how the different, um, the different components of our solution interact together. So uh, we're really going to be focusing on reporting today, but we are going to touch a little bit on planning and a little bit on dashboards as well. So <clears throat> I'll, cover, I'll cover both the Excel reporting as well as the enterprise reporting, or the SAP V1 reporting as well as the enterprise reporting um, in this architecture. So first, Everything starts with um, report writing. So you'll notice that there is a dotted line here that goes into SAP Business One. That dotted line indicates that there is a live integration into Business One. So we're not just talking at the general ledger. We're talking sub-ledger. I can get to any detail. Um, I can go from a report. So I'm looking at a P&L report. 
I can drill all the way back to look at source data. So if I wanted to see a you know, sales invoice or a vendor invoice, I could do that all the way from the report if that's how I designed the report. So it's an, uh, we use Excel. We're an Excel add-in. Uh, very important to point out for everyone today, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about reporting or we're talking about planning. At no point in time do we ever store any data inside of Excel. So that's kind of the first thing to, to grab the, wrap your mind around the concept of, of we're not storing data in, into Excel. We need a data source. And here you can see we're getting that data from, from B1. You know that I can get to all the data inside of B1. If you had uh, user-defined fields or, or tables or customizations or third-party products, our report writing tool comes uh, with an integration tool um, built into it. So you can easily um, add those things that might be specific to your organization. So that's great. You know we can get to all of B1, but now the question is, <clears throat> what about the rest of your organization? So maybe you've got some disparate data sources. Maybe you've got um, you know, a proprietary system, or you've got an access database, or SQL database, or Excel spreadsheets, or here you see I've referenced CRM. It really can be any other data source. And you'd like to include this data along with your report writing. So how do you do that? <clears throat> the answer is that you use our pre-built Microsoft SQL data warehouse. So I know some people are cringing when I say the word data warehouse. They see this big silo, this vision of a big silo and a team of IT people coming in. That's not at all what this is. So the BI360 data warehouse is a pre-built data warehouse. It's a packaged data warehouse. And remember, our entire suite is a self-service suite. So this data warehouse comes pre-built with seven modules, general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, projects, payroll, uh, CapEx, and I uh, forgot one, one more in there. Uh, and you can add up to 50. So what would one of the other 50s be? Maybe it's going to be your CRM system. Maybe it's your industry proprietary system. But you can, you can name those modules and bring in that data however you'd like to. So the, the data warehouse also uh, allows you to do things like uh, advanced consolidations. So if you're doing auto eliminations, we, we manage that automatically within the data warehouse. Uh, if you're doing currencies, we have a full uh, multi-currency engine built into our data warehouse. Um, you know, just lots of stuff that you can do with it. If you, if you have um, hierarchical tree structures within your organization, so think about if you've got multiple entities, and you want to be able to report on those entities at a regional level, or you want to report on your entities by a product line, um, or you want to build trees for products, whatever it is, you can build an unlimited number of hierarchical tree structures within the data warehouse very, very easily. So now you've got your, all of your disparate data across your enterprise. You've got all of your B1 actuals all now in the data warehouse, and you'll notice that the report writing tool is integrated to the data warehouse out of the box. So I can decide, do I want to run a live build or run a live report off of SAP B1, or do I want to build or run a report off of the data warehouse? It's really completely up to me. If my need is all I need is just my B1 data, it's very simple. It comes integrated out of the box. I don't have to do much. If I want to add my other data sources, then you'll know that I have the option to add the data warehouse um, to the solution. So the next part of this is planning. Uh, I will tell you that planning is virtually the same tool as report writing, with the exception reporting, you're just pulling data. Planning, you're pulling data, you're adding data, you're manipulating that data, and you're storing that data back, right? So where are you storing it? You're storing it to the data warehouse. So our budget tables reside within the data warehouse. So now you've got all your B1 actuals, all your disparate data, your unlimited ver number of versions of bud uh, budgets and forecasts, and all of that is available for reporting. So you want to do that P&L with your actuals to a budget or your actuals to a forecast, you know that you can do that, right? So you'll also notice that the dashboard tool um, is exactly the same. So it's live off of B1 or it's off the data warehouse. So you've got formatted reporting. It's important to point out that reporting and planning are available both in Excel or the web. And then you also have the analytics side with the dashboard, which is a web-based tool. And I'll be showing this all to you today. With that, let's dive into the product demonstration. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off by showing you uh, the Excel user experience. Um, this is if I was reporting 
off of SAP B1 Live. So just a couple of things to help you understand where I'm at. You can see my report is called the SAP Modern Profit and Loss. Um, I'm running Excel 2010. Uh, you'll notice that I've got, I've got the ribbon up here uh, for report writing and I've got the ribbon up here for planning. So um, a little bit of, over on the left-hand side, I want for everyone just to kind of ignore for a minute the design side. We're talking strictly about the user side, the end user experience. So your end users wouldn't see this. I, I'm a super user, so I have both. So from the user experience, you'll also notice that I'm running the OEC um, Computers SAP B1 sample company. So uh, you see here that I've got a finished formatted report and there's no data. So <clears throat> when, when this report was built for me, they passed it out to me and, and it was defined these filters, right? Filter is choosing the period and choosing the budget version. These were predefined when they built the report. So it's really up to the person building the report uh, what type of data that they'd like for me to filter. So here I'm going to go in and I'm going to select a different period. It's very easy for me to do. Once I do that, I just say OK, and now I've got a separate period that I can, I can run the report on. So uh, I also have here a budget. So if I wanted to go and choose a budget version, assuming that I had multiple budget versions, I could go in and do that as well. Once I've made that, that selection, I simply just say run. And what you're seeing now is a report that's it's pulling back instantaneous live results from SAP B1. And what you're seeing is a report that's very indicative of what you would see inside of Excel. So here I have the graphs uh, that I like to see. Uh, maybe I don't want to see that graph, so I added an expansion group. So I might want to collapse that group. Um, I have conditional formatting, so I've got traffic lights here. I could have added in cell graphs or pointers or really whatever I wanted to do, but I have a nice looking, very clean looking report that's very indicative of what I would see with Excel. So right, so I, I used my, my design capabilities in Excel and I had access to the data because I can get to all the data inside of B1. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on the design side. So if I wanted to go in and look at data, so I wanted to know what made up JB uh, printer revenues, and I went and I right clicked, I could drill down. These drill downs are also definable by the person that built the report. Here, I have two drill downs. One is the journal, the, the journal transaction level. The other is a pivot table. So I drilled into my journal transaction level, and I can see that, oops, I'm going a little faster. I can see the transaction, uh, all the information about the transaction amounts, et cetera, that made up that number. Uh, also important to point out that I, somebody could have designed the report for me to where I had the ability to drill all the way back to the source data, which I talked about earlier. So very clean, very easy report. If I would like to share this report with somebody, I could simply just say publish here and run it again, uh, such as I'm doing now. And you'll notice that the entire left-hand side of this report is going to disappear. So basically our, our BI360 add-in disappears and this report is now uh, just an Excel document. So I can't drill down, I can't change anything, but I might want to send this information off to somebody. I might want to PDF this and email it to somebody. And that's the manual way that I can do that, right? There is also an automated way of doing that where I, we have a module called the publisher, which will allow me to create subscriptions for all of my users. So I'm going to send it to one person um, at a certain uh, time of the month, uh, and it's going to be in a, in a certain format. And then I'm going to send it to the other person, let's say that it's going to be a different time of the month in a different format. So I can decide how the distribution works, at what frequency, and in what format those reports are delivered, and I can do that all automatically. <clears throat> so that's, that's kind of basic, basic overview of how the reporting tool works. I will get more into that as we go. But let's talk about where, where's the data coming from. So this is really important for those of you that are, um, that are, that are coming to us with a, with a B1 background, especially if you've ever used XLR. So some of this would be familiar. So here I am now in the design mode. Again, I have the sample company for OEC. I've got all of my modules available and all of my data available. So how did I build this report? Well, I built this report by going in here and saying, here's my account, my account code. I expanded on that, and you'll see if I'm in cell 22C, 
that it says natural account. Well, what I did is I just pulled natural account in here. So when I pulled natural account in, right, that's row 22. If As I pulled that in there, it's asked me what accounts do I want to include? And you can see some are included. Maybe I want to come, and some are not. Maybe I want to come back and include this revenue account. I can. Uh, I can also use ranges. That's going to ensure that if I if I bring if I add an account uh, to my general ledger inside of B1, that it's automatically going to be included unless I say don't include it. So so I've got my natural account in here. So how did I get my natural account name? You can see that natural account name is just an attribute of natural account. So very, very easy to do that. So all of the formatting and formulation that I'm uh, formulating that I'm accustomed to inside of B1, I still have all those capabilities, but I also have a lot more. So for example, you'll see that I have year to date strung across all of these columns. So this is telling me that all of these columns are being filtered by year to date. Well, how did I do that? Did I write a formula? Well, you know I can write all the formulas that I normally could in Excel, but in this case, I also have all these pre-built functions. So one of those is year to date. So I would have pulled it over into cell Q19, and then I would have just expanded it across these rows, now filtering everything year to date based on that, that uh, filter function. Okay, so very, very easy to go through and build reports. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. So I'm opening up another P&L, and I will point out to everybody, it's not that I like P&Ls better than any other kind of report. The purpose of me showing you P&Ls is because what I really want to do is I want to kind of pick one type of report and show you how drastically I can change that report. So you'll see many, many, many styles. One of the things that I love to say, and I'll actually run this report, one of the things I love to say about our reporting tool is if you don't like the way it looks, fantastic. Change it, right? It's all about the, your design skills inside of Excel, and do you have access to the data? So we've covered B1, reporting off of B1. So we're, we're going to dive a little bit more into reporting, but there's going to be a lot of people here that are looking today that say, well, that's nice, but I've got tons of Excel spreadsheets. I've got tons of um, other data sources that I'd like to include in my reporting. So I switched over to the data warehouse, so I'm no longer off of B1. The tool is exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the, is the data that I'm going to be building the reports with, right? So the data source changed. But in this report, just to kind of cover it for you, you notice I'm filtering by actual month, actual month last year, actual year to date current year, actual year to date last year. Right? I've added some in-cell graphs, you know, similar look, but it's a very different report. Still has traffic lights, but very different report. I can still do all the same things that you saw before, and now you'll notice in drilling down that I've got four different um, drill down levels. Again, they're completely definable. So if I go into the summary, you can still see that I can see the transaction. I can pop back into the reports. You'll also notice that I added a notes tab here. It's just because I might want to be um, delivering notes to the people that are receiving this report. I also changed a few things, right? It's all about how I want to design it, and I've created expansion groups, typical Excel stuff, at the account level. So here I am looking at, or at the department level. Here I am looking at my, my administration department. I expand and collapse the groups, however I want to do that. So cool, you get that you can do the same stuff with B1 as you can do with the data warehouse. And you'll notice that I've introduced some new parameters. Here I'm looking at entity. So lots of different ways that I can choose my parameters, by the way. This is a selection group. I can do check boxes. I can do trees. I'm actually going to show you that. But here's how I would select those, just like you saw me selecting counts. And I'm running it off of these three entities, right? Uh, scenario is important, too. I brought in, I, I have multiple scenarios. I'm, I'm running budget month. You see that under I-18, it says budget month. If I change this to forecast and I run it again, it's going to change the title of forecast and it's going to bring in all of my forecast data. If I had multiple budgets and multiple forecasts, I would have a parameter here that would say version. So I would select from the version of my budget or my forecast. So very, very powerful from a reporting perspective. So where's the data coming from, right? Same as, same as in B1. I'll actually close down this layout editor this time, see the, the report. But you'll notice that I have, you can tell I was doing some, uh, some recent demos. 
was I did a demo for somebody today that had a it was a not for profit that had a CMS membership system. So you'll notice that I've got a tab here. Remember, I can add 50 modules. So any data, right? Uh, I can add any type of data that I want. I've got CRM. I've got E2, which is a, a payroll system. I've got membership data. I've got Google Analytics. So if you want to be able to, if, if you're a really a web-based um, sales house and you want to be able to see uh, how your visits to your website correspond with the revenue that's coming from B1, how would you do that today, right? You'd be pulling data out and trying to mash it into Excel. I don't need to do that. I've got all my Google Analytics data, and I can compare that and build a report along with all of my financial data. So all of this financial data would assume that I was bringing that, you know, including projects, payroll, would assume that I was pulling in that data from B1. But, you know, a lot of people are going to have multiple ERPs. You did an acquisition. You might have another system. You want to map those accounts in. You want to be able to consolidate and report on them. Fantastic, you can do all of that stuff. This, this report was built exactly the same way. So if I went into General Ledger, you'll see account. Here's account on line 20, and there's the description which you'll find underneath account. And so you'll see it right there. So again, all of my data is in here. It's all in a, in a nomenclature that I will easily understand that's specific to my organization. So with that, I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, I will actually show you one more report, and then I'm going to spend a few minutes um, building you a report. So one last report, just kind of to illustrate the point of I was talking earlier about P&Ls. <clears throat> so you'll notice this is what we call a narrative report. You'll see that it has multiple tabs here, and you'll see that I have something that says P&L variants. But before I switch to a different tab, I want to point out that it says description. It's a default. It says moderate. It's a default. There's tons and tons of drivers built into here. The profitability this month was moderate. That's a default. Zeros, no, no numbers in here, no graphs, minimum lang minimal language, et cetera. Okay? So now I'm going to switch over to the P&L variant side, and I'm going to run this P&L, yet another P&L, completely different than the ones you saw before, right? There's no graphs in this one at the top. Uh, still selecting off of entities so I can consolidate all my entities. I could have done it in separate tabs if I wanted to. So now I'm looking at a nice looking report. There's a couple of differences here. You'll notice that I have expansion groups in the year. I've got an aggregated total for 2015 and 2014. But if I expand upon that, I'm now looking at the individual period totals. So really, again, it's all about how I want to build it, how I want to see the report, right? So a lot, a lot of things to consider here is that you might want, along with your P&L, to provide numbers to, let's say, your department managers, right? Salespeople, they, they see green and they say, wow, my revenue's good, right? Uh, I must be doing a good job. Well, what if you want to point out an increase in cost of sales or other factors in your, in your business? You might want to add a narrative with the report. The other thing that you might want to do is a management report or a board report where you want to be able to not only take the numbers, and it, you know, deliver those, but you also want to have a, a full uh, write-up about the condition of the company or the status of the company, what's, you know, what's going on. And typically the way people do that is they export it to, to PowerPoint or export it to Word, they write a narrative, um, and, and that works out well for them. Unfortunately, what happens if you change the budget? Maybe you want to go to a forecast or you change entities. Here I've got four, or I change the period. All of my data is going to change, right? So I've got to go back now and transpose all of that those numbers into my new write-up and work. So that can be very, very cumbersome. Let me show you how we do it. Standard Excel stuff. You'll now, now notice that I pulled my results. It populated my P&L and it populated my narrative, right? It's now the U.S. because I'm running it on the U.S. company here. If I change the company, it would be, it would be either one or more of the other companies. It says sees great improvement. Remember that was a that was a moderate uh, default. The profitability this month was great. Moved from the moderate default, and all of the things in here have been populated. The language has been added. The, all the drivers have changed based on the results that I pulled with my filter. So you know I've got the P&L variants, but I can add as many tabs of reports in here as I want. Standard Excel functionality. Here I'm showing a sales report with my top 15 tr sales transactions. I'm showing a top uh, vendor report, my top 10 vendor uh, 
payments and then receivables, et cetera. Again, I can add directions as well. So the point of me showing you all of this is the fact that I, I showed you one type of report and I showed you drastically different versions of that report. So imagine now if you take that same philosophy across any report that you want to build, sales report, you know, uh, it wouldn't even matter, inventory report, it really won't matter. Whatever you want to be able to do, you're limited by your Excel imagination and skills, and you know that you can get to all of the data. Okay? So there's no limitation there. So what I'm going to do really quickly here is just build your report because we still got a lot to show. So I'm in Excel. You notice that I selected my data warehouse as the data source. It automatically brought up all of my data across my enterprise for me to build. There's nothing in here. I'm going to build you a quick, simple report. I don't want to take up too much time, but I do want to show you how the tool works so that everybody knows, hey, I can do this. Right? So standard stuff I'm doing in Excel. Everybody on the call today can build a budget or a report inside of Excel. and every, It's the most powerful design tool in the world for reporting. So uh, I'll build you a trial balance. I will start to do oops, my headers and I think I made that a little bit wide so let's reduce it down a little bit so uh, now I need to start bringing in data right so where am I going to find that data you kind of saw it before so I'm going to go into my general ledger there's my account I pull it in so I pulled in my data I didn't have to cut copy paste pivot anything so I brought my account in there, and what's it asking me? It's saying, hey, cool, you want to filter this. How do you want to filter this? What kind of a selection group do you want? Across the row, down the column, or not at all. We can tell by my headers I'm going across the row, like most financial reports. So here it is. I, I brought my account into the layout editor. As you already know about this, I can select you know, whatever I want. You know I can do ranges. But just so we get a lot of data, let's include everything. Okay, Quick and easy to add everything. So I need a description of the account. Everybody probably remembers where that is. It's right underneath account. It's an attribute. Uh, I need to bring in a period. Now, I've told you about the period functions. I can still do a date range or I can type in formulations, but you already know that I've got all these period functions. So I'm going to pull in year to date. I'm going to pull in last year to date, and I'm going to write you a variance just so that you know I'm in Excel and there is no trickery. Okay? And by the way, you see in my layout editor, you see D&E filtering on those functions for year-to-date, last year-to-date. If I don't like that title, I can change it to anything I want. Okay? So uh, I need to bring in an amount, right? So I'll go back into the general ledger, and I know I'm bouncing around a bit, but I think it flows better this way. So I'm going to go in here, and you'll notice that I have my amounts. So I'm going to pull in my amount. I'm going to do that standard Excel thing. And, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going a little quick. So I'm going to pull in my amounts. I'm going to write my variance. And now I'm going to put in a total. So the only thing that would be different here, by the way, right? I'm doing a trial balance, but if I was doing like a P&L, I would just copy rows 8 and 9 and paste them down a couple of rows later, and then I would filter out my revenue accounts, my cost of sales, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's, that, that would be how I'd be building it. But the process is exactly the same. I'm just showing you the quick way, uh, building a simple report. So I need to sum this up. Uh, you remember when I was in Run, if I right-clicked, what that did was that drilled down. But now I'm in the Design tab, and it sees an amount. If I right-click, I've got all of these little, uh, I can create these hot buttons, but I've got one that says Create Sum. I don't even really need to leave the page. I drag it across. For all intensive purposes, I just finished that report but we need to make it look like an, a real report. So we'll come up here and we'll do that stuff that we like to do so much. Make it look cool. Finance people, they love blue, so I'm definitely going to use blue in here. Uh, I will bold this. I like to write justify it, maybe some dollars and a total field. And what else do we do? Let's center that account because we want it to be separated a little bit. Let's make this look a little bit more like a real report. So it looks like a real report, right? Quick and easy. So I send it out to the team. So the department manager, you know that user experience, they're going to only have the run tab. They're going to see a report like this. They're going to say, cool, let me go and find the period that I want to run this 
report for. And then say, I'm going to run it for September. Uh, I'm going to run it. And there's the trial balance. So quick and easy kind of shows you the, the, the report. And see, you can see I didn't make the columns wide enough there. No problem. I can simply go back here and say, cool, I need to make those columns a little bit wider, right? I would save it, distribute it back out, and they're going to run that report again for the same period, and now you'll know the columns are, are wide enough to, to show you. And hopefully nobody's trial balance looks like that sample data. So that's not rocket science, but what it shows you, you know, I built a trial balance, but what it shows you is how easy it is to work with the tool. Let's make it a little bit more unique. So let's say that I sent it out to the, depart, the, to the manager, and the manager says, Mike, this is fantastic except for you're consolidating all of my information into one sheet. You know I have multiple regions, I have multiple product regions, and I have multiple companies underneath the, each of those regions. I'd like to be able to see this by like an entity uh, view. Uh, okay, so that's, that's a reasonable request. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to add entity to my report. And the way that I'm going to do that now is I'm going, to, I'm going to come into my layout editor, and you'll notice as I move my cursor into this layout editor, it turns blue, right? Sheet filters. So I'm going to filter this entire sheet. What am I going to filter it on? Entity or any other parameter that I want to build. I'll name the parameter whatever I want. Remember I said you could choose multiple styles. Checkboxes are great if I want to compare one versus another, but I want to be able to represent that region, that parent-child relationship with the region and the entities underneath that region. So I say, okay, I can filter out companies if I don't want to include some of them, but I'm going to include all of them. And then I love the magic button called create sheet per value. What that's going to do is it's going to consolidate that region level on one tab and then give me the individual entities on other tabs. That's what that is instead of all on one page. I say finish. The only other thing that I would need to do here is I would need to go and pull my parameter in. So I'll open up my parameters. You see entity. I'm pulling it in here so that I have the, the header or the name of the entity along with the report. What would have taken 20 seconds if I wasn't talking? I redistribute that report back out. Manager sees it and says, okay, so this looks a little bit more like what I want. Mike, here's my two regions. I want to look at my APAC region. Uh, I'm going to run it at the APAC region. And of course, I'm, I'm showing this to you on a trial balance, but it works the same across any type of report that I want to build. And these could have been product trees, right? You all, all know I can build an unlimited number of trees. So here you see my Asia Pacific region. That's one tab. And then you see the two entities that I have underneath that, Singapore, right? Singapore and Australia's individual entities with their individual results. So, okay, fantastic. But you know, Mike, I really just want to see Canada. Uh, you can go and run Canada. You don't need to consolidate the level. There's Canada. So that's cool, but what about line of business? Well, I built another tree. So here I separated out my companies, coincidentally the same ones you just saw, by manufacturing line and distribution line. So I say, show me all my manufacturing companies. There's my manufacturing companies. And underneath that, I've got Australia and the US, right? I mean, right, we're limited in, in the data, but you get the point. If these were your companies, this would be the, the actual setup of how your company works. So that's kind of reporting from the Excel design and user experience, but I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to get rid of this nice work that I just created, and I am going to move this across to the web portal. So what I did is I logged in with my username and my password, and I'm looking at my web portal. Uh, I am going to expand this so you can see it. So what I have here is I have my dashboards, right? And you'll also notice that I have reports. So you can, we could start with some of the basics is that you'll notice I have folders over here. These are definable folders. So you can have your sales reports, your finance reports, you know, inventory, production, whatever it is that you want. Here I've got some budget stuff as well. But I'm flipping through and I've got all these reports. Right? I showed you P&Ls before. You're probably P&L'd out at this point. But you, you know, right, I can build a report now and I can send it up to the web. So here I see that same report I first showed you, right? Or the first one I showed you off the data warehouse. I say I want to run that report. I click it. And you'll notice that it looks very much like Excel. Let me run it, refresh it, so we got some good numbers. So it looks very much like Excel, but it's not Excel. So uh, I might even go back to 
did was I selected it at previous times where I ran this report. I see what my data source is. I can change the parameters just like I could do in Excel, but it's not Excel. I'm not intimidated by the Excel ribbon or any of that type of stuff. Here I can change my entities. Right? I can change the period. I can change the scenario. I can share this report if I wanted to share it with somebody. Uh, I've got a QR code. I've got a link that I can send them. Um, I can download this report if I want to download this to Excel. Why would I want to download it to Excel? Well, if this report was put up into the web portal for me, I might, Mike might want to, you know, do some calculations. So I'm going to download it in Excel and I want to run my own personal calculations. Uh, I can expand the view of the report, but I can do all the same stuff here that you saw before. Right? Here I just drilled down and you can see I'm looking at the transaction that made up that number. Still again, one transaction, same report, in cell graphs, you know, graphs of the groups, but certainly capable of doing that. So again, you can see the power of report writing. I can still scroll through my favorites as I want. Um, I will show you a couple of other reports really quickly because I've been showing you P&Ls, and I think probably everybody's like, okay, we're sick of P&Ls. So what about a sales report? And I'll point out to you, this is only one model that I have here uh, that we're showing kind of the, the reporting and accounting. But we have, I think, 15 or 16 different verticals, not-for-profit, uh, retail, healthcare, you know, real estate, uh, finance. I mean, there's, so in each one of those models that I log into, um, I have specific reports uh, that would be uh, specific to those industries. Like if I logged in, for example, to not-for-profit, I would see grant dashboards, membership dashboards, grant reports, you know, things that were specific to them. Here I'm in the corporate model, just kind of keeping it generic, just so everybody knows that. But so I'm looking at a, uh, at a sales order detail report, and you can see I can go through by customer and look at all the different um, products that they have on order. Uh, I can look at quantities, rates, prices, all that kind of good stuff looking through. And as you know, I can drill back through any, through any of these. If I didn't like these reports, I can modify them, right? You can have them change. So I think everyone's kind of getting the idea. Um, by the way, too, I can change to a, to a flip through view. I'm on my favorites, so I'm showing just my favorites, not all reports. But I can go through and I can get a quick view of, of reports. Oh, here's one that's Google Analytics. So here's, by the way, a good example of a report that has absolutely nothing to do with my, my SAP V1 data. So all of these reports you see inside of the web portal are either live off of B1 or off the data warehouse. This one is clearly off the data warehouse, and it's because it's, it's all based on Google Analytics information. So I bring in and build um, the reports however I want to off the data uh, that I've collected from, from Google. So if you can dream it up, we, we can build it inside of our tool. So with that, I'm going to switch over to uh, dashboards. I like the flip through view, by the way. So I want to kind of go through and show you the dashboards. What type of dashboard? Well, it really depends on what you want. Uh, you want to go and look at a revenue dashboard? Fantastic. Also, the dashboards work off the same integration as reporting, as well as you know whether it's format or ad hoc, we, we use the same integration across the board. I can also expand these as well. So here you can see that I'm looking at a revenue comparison product sales by business unit with the ability to drill into the quarter. So if I, if I just hover over it, it, you'll notice that it sends a pop-up and gives me the monthly amounts. But if I were to, to drill into corporate EMEA, now I'm looking at the quarterly amounts and I can see all of the quarterly information. Uh, as I'm changing things, now I'm looking at revenue comparison service sales by drilling into the quarter. Each time I drill in, you'll notice that all the metrics change. So if I drill back uh, and I select a different entity, you'll notice that the metrics are all changing. So here I'm looking at revenue trends where I've got my budgets. That budget line is, uh, that blue line is indicating what I budgeted and the my green, my green um, towers are, are the actuals that are being um, produced and delivered to this, this dashboard. Very simple to build, very powerful information. Again, I, I can add parameters into this as well. So here I'm looking at an actual scenario, so my actual data, uh, and i allowed to choose the uh, fiscal year. So 
give you a different type. Uh, so going from something that's that's really um, revenue based to like a project based. So maybe you want a, a dashboard that is specific to projects. Um, if you're doing any of that, you can see that it, you can have kind of a hybrid. You've got the ability to go through in a formatted area to kind of select the projects. Here I'll select widen highway and it's going to automatically update all of the data that's related to that project. And by the way, if these, these squares, which we call dashlets, if I wanted to expand them or shrink them when I'm designing it, I can do it. Maybe I want to be able to see it a little bit, little bit clearer. So really, uh, we've got really hundreds of examples of dashboards and reports and uh, to date, we pretty much can build anything. So with that, I'm going to spend maybe the last five minutes just talking with you about budgeting. So you'll notice that I have a folder here that says annual budget. <clears throat> and I'm going to flip through some of the budgets that I have in here. I've got a personnel, I've got CapEx, a, you know, revenue, a sales budget. You kind of get the point. I'll go into my uh, budget model for expenses. And when I open this up, the first thing that you're going to notice is, wow, that looks a lot like reporting. Remember I said it's the same tool except for budgeting you're collecting data. So this is always the hard thing for people to kind of grasp their mind around because when they do budgeting in Excel, they're going to have a bunch of people contributing to that budget. Everybody's got a different version. Everybody's storing data into the Excel template. Somebody's got to collect that. Usually it's the person that's pulling their hair out because they're going to spend a lot of time collecting data and consolidating data and trying to make that whole thing work, right? So here, we don't do it that way. We, the only reason we have multiple tabs is to give you instructions. So these are demo instructions, but in, in a real life scenario, these would be um, instructions for how to complete your budget, right? So step-by-step -step instructions, policies, procedures, and the actual budget. So this is assuming these parameters, right? Just like you saw in reporting, is assuming I'm a real super budgeting user, right? So I'm, I'm contributing to multiple companies, multiple departments, et cetera, et cetera. So if, let's just take something that's more realistic. If I was, had multiple departments, so let's say 100 and 200, I'd come in and I'd enter in my data for 100. I would say save or submit. Right? This is the workflow submit button. It's, it's deactivated. And then I would change this department to my other one, which is 200. I'd enter in my data, and I would submit it. So let's make it even a simpler scenario. I'm going to go ahead and expand this, and you won't even see those, um, those parameters. So let's assume here that somebody sent me the budget template uh, for the company, for the department. I didn't need to change any parameter. I didn't need to change any of the parameters. And the only button I had highlighted up here was the Save button or the Submit button. So forget all of that. So now I just need to do contribution to my budget. Super easy. So I'm going to come in here and say, well, this is 60000 for for uh, conference and seminars, right? I'm going to do that stuff I do in Excel. I'm going to drag it across, but in April, I'm going to make this 70000 right? Okay, I did that with my entire budget. Save, I'm done. Store that data back to the data warehouse. The person that's going to run a consolidated budget can immediately look at the consolidated budget or look at any reports with that information that I just contributed. Not stored in Excel. I can do this, by the way, it's just like reporting. I can do this either in Excel or via the web like you're seeing now. So what if we're a little bit more complex? Let's say that uh, we want to do, um, do some other things. Let's say I want to spread this budget a little bit. So I'll make this simple. I'm going to just zero this out, and I'm going to bring in last year's history. So you saw I have multiple selections there. So what I did, this by reference data, this is last year's actuals or whatever reference data I want. But in this case, it's last year's actuals. Um, and what I'm looking at here is I just, this is my current budget date, uh, my, my current budget that I'm working on, and I just copied in last year's history. So what if I said, okay, let's just spread this whole thing by 8%. It's an 8% increase. We're a simple company. It just allocated that 8% across the budget year. I'm done. I say, okay. I exit out. I'm done. So what if, you're probably asking now, why do some of these have borders around them and others don't? Well, what that's indicating to you is that there's a line item detail underneath here. So I can't change it at this level. I've actually got to drill into the line item detail by right-clicking. Um, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add detail in here. 
So you'll notice that somebody, this demo environment is shared by literally hundreds of people. Uh, I'm in consulting and somebody today went in and added bat, cat, and hat. So I don't know that that's really related to consulting, but we'll stay with that theme. I'm going to add rat. So whatever my budget line item is, I'm going to go in and add the amounts across the board. And when I'm done, you know I say OK. And then I go back and I save my budget. Very, very simple to do. Uh, if I wanted to add in actual information, you can see that I can add other things for people to see. So just so you know, yellow, just the way we do it, yellow means I can change it, blue means I can't. Right? It's just reference data that I might want to see. Or you might notice that I've, I've copied data from another template. I fed data from another template. I didn't copy it. It was fed in automatically. This is all payroll data that's fed into my other expense because maybe I wanted to account for that my other expense budget. Cannot change it. Okay? So I'll say this again, just like reports, if you don't like the way this budget template looks, fantastic, change it. Design it how you want. Right? It's all about collecting the data, putting it back into the right department um, in, in the right company at the right period. Right? Very easy to do. Doesn't get much simpler than that. So with that, I'm going to I'm going to wind up the uh, demonstration today.